to wear national colors and to represent my country with a pride. Getting the opportunity to go out there and represent South Africa as a country, it means we've got a talent. Thank you, KG. Thank you. There she is. She has the talent. I've seen it with my own eyes. Khutato Monjani, KG, the pride of Lumpopo. And also the pride of the country because no one lesser than the number one citizen of this country, the president in Cyril Ramaphosa, put out a tweet where he mentioned you. Did you actually see the tweet? Yeah, yeah, I've seen the tweet making rounds, you know. Uh, <laughs> so I tweet away, the president is just tweeting about you, worrying yeah, when he's I, tweeting. <laughs> I mean, it, it was because South Africa was owning the stage at Wimbledon, you know. It, it wasn't only me, but, you know, the whole hype that the South Africans have arrived and they're dominating. So you can imagine why it got to the president, because uh. South Africa was on fire. So, yeah. And not only did he mention her by name, he then says, this is the president of the country during Wimbledon where Khutato was playing and got to the semifinals. He says all the best to Khutato Monjani, who's going to become the first South African black woman to play at Wimbledon. He actually points you out, specifies you, and record-breaking. What did that feel like to now be, you know, you're the first? No other black South African woman has ever been on the grass at Wimbledon. I mean, uh, obviously, I wasn't aware of that, but uh, obviously, it's uh, quite an achievement for me because it's historic, you know. Mm. Like, uh, I always tell you that for me, I, b I always become the first, you know, wheelchair tennis player to be in Grand Slam, to be in Masters. So for me, I always feel like I'm a, I'm a hope giver, you know. I give hope to the other young South Africans or other young Africans who, who want to live a dream. So for me, it really means a lot because mm. uh, I've been grinding hard in this in this sport and getting where I am today, I mean, it, it's all hard work. I can't really complain much, but, you know, celebrate this moment because mm. it's quite a, a huge one for me. Semi-final pressure, right? <laughs> it's Wimbledon. <laughs> it's, it, it must have been unbelievable to come out onto that court. Yeah. Looking at, I never played on grass. You know, I had only one day to get the feel of how grass is. It's fine. No, it's not. Because, hey, remember, I'm on a wheelchair, hey? Uh. <laughs> and those are tires, those are rubbers. So you can imagine rubber on grass, how it, how it feels. So, like, I, I couldn't get away with the, you know, maneuvering the wheelchair with the body like I would do on a, on a hard court. Uh. I, I had to, like, go all out on my arms, and I still have to hit the ball. Uh. So, yes. It was a lot. So much tougher, eh? <laughs> it, it was, it was, it was, it was hard. Like, I couldn't believe it. I thought I would just get there and do whatever I do best. But, uh, yeah, it, it was a challenge. But uh, I'm happy that I still made it through to the, to the, to the, to the first round. Because I know my opponent really well. But uh, I was never been so nervous for the first time playing a tournament. Uh. But Wimbledon, I was shaky, like, from first set to the last set. Who shaky is right here, you I mean, you know, I don't know. I was just nervous. I never played on grass, and I don't know how my opponents, you know, handled the grass since they played on grass before. Uh, so, like you've been, in. I mean, you've been playing Grand Slam tournaments. I know, like I said earlier on the show, I've been with you at the Australian Open a couple of years ago. You've played all the other Grand Slams. You've been on Roland Garros on the clay court. Why? Because you've been playing tennis so long, had you never been to Wimbledon? Yeah, simply because, you know, tennis, we work with, you know, point system, ranking system. You need to be ranked in the top seven specifically because when you're number eight, you're not guarantee the spot because they can give the wild card to the countrymen or women. Mm. So for me, I, I think I was so lucky because when I entered the tournament, I was still number six because I couldn't play two months this year. So I dropped a lot of points. But uh, I think that's where they came to the decision to give me a wild card to get into Wimbledon. So, yeah, that's how it happened, that I got, uh, I got a wild card, and I was like, wow, feels like a dream come true, completing all the four slams. No one has ever done that <laughs> from wheelchair tennis site in this continent. Yeah. The, the girl from Limpopo, the girl from Polukwani, in 2005 doesn't even care about the sport of tennis. <laughs> 13 years later, we're talking about your Wimbledon semi-final. What has tennis done and change your life? Definitely credit should go to Wheelchair Tennis South Africa for introducing the sport to me, you know, and together with Airport Company South Africa, providing all the equipment or necessary resources for me to be able to play. And they've given me an opportunity to go out there and 
try out the sport. I mean, I didn't like it, but uh, it happened that I fell in love with it. You know, I enjoyed the challenge. Mm. So you can imagine. And Sasko coming in between talking Paralympics. I mean, I went to my first Paralympic without knowing what Paralympics are. Mm. But, uh, you know, today we're speaking, you know, a different language because I, I, I just one person who want more, you know. After Wimbledon, I just feel like uh, I can see like light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, I think I'm, I'm at a point whereby I really, I really want to win a, a big title now. I mean, I see your posts on Instagram, and anybody who wants to go and have a look, you'll see it. We see you quite a lot with another legend from uh, Limpopo in Casta Semenya. How much of an inspiration is that friendship to what you're doing and how you are now we're seeing your tennis game improve. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've learned a lot from Costa, to be honest, because what I admire the most is her mental toughness, you mm. know. I mean, beyond what's really happening to her, I mean, sh she overcame all that, and it's simply because she's mentally tough. And for me, that's what I need in this sport, because I'm not a grassroots crafted, you know, player. Mm. I started tennis at the, I mean, at the age of 19. I was old already to become, you know, the best player in the world. Mm. But having to hang out with someone like that who's so positive, I mean, you can imagine uh, that really helps me grow also as an athlete. So I don't or anything, but we, we're just people who share the same sentiments and goals. So. But you, you, got, you also now to need to work on as something, you know, just... When you win, Ribbon is something. Yeah. <laughs> you with the Cobra, we need something. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, in tennis, you know, we, we all go come on for more. It's all about the fist pump. You know, we, 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 we wish we have all this funny celebration like Cobra, <laughs> like the no, soccer players. It is an Elikasta, man. Do something there. Aye, man. Now I'm not that often expressive, you know, athlete. And I, I, just, I, just, I just do things calm. I'm a chilled, I'm a chilled person. KG, <laughs> thanks for being with us. Thanks for sharing it. Thanks for flying the flag so high for us at Wimbledon and keep soaring, keep inspiring, keep doing what you do. Thank you. There she is. Khutato Munjani.